When you understand things, you can sum things up more simply than other people can. I love to make original videos, even if they're about topics that people have discussed a thousand times. The fact that I say them in a much more concise, and I sometimes fail at being concise because I repeat myself, <laughs> more concise or contrite manner than uh, other people do. I think about uh, ISO and sensor saturation. As I showed you in a video from like uh, two or three days ago, if you are shooting a digital camera, obviously so, right? In aperture priority or shutter priority or program, God forbid, meaning full auto. High ISO, meaning as implied, unnecessarily high ISO because necessary high ISO might be dark and gritty and you got to take handheld shots and you can't use a flash like indoor in a club, so you have to use high ISO. What I mean and imply in connotation and denotation is excessively or unnecessary high ISO is direct causation in shutter priority, aperture priority, and program, i.e. auto mode, for noise. Technically, there's four types of noise, but the noise that everybody talks about, of course, is high ISO noise. But the high ISO noise is direct causation that if you unnecessarily set it high, you will end up with. And of course, there's denoise uh, projects and topaz denoise. There's a lot of ways to reduce noise. And also, too, the noise has a set frequencies that actual camera processing has gotten really, really adept at removing because if you know specific frequencies of noise from the sensor, then you could actually remove it or uh, noise from the actual uh, uh, shots from the analog to digital converter. It weeds that out. And, of course, you could weed out a lot more of it in your computer. But almost all noise, even though we're not talking about all four forms of noise like chroma noise and whatnot, is SNR, signal to noise ratio. Yes? Signal to noise ratio. People don't, I don't think they get it when I say sensor saturation is vitally important, and I'm not talking about clipping the highlights. So obviously, you need to set your uh, correct lighting ratios. Yeah? If you want like a rim shot on like someone's body or face, the lighting ratios have to be accurate but you still need to saturate. Like if someone, you're outside and you can't set your lighting ratios, there's some uh, sunrise or sunset, you know, edging the side of a house. And then you, so I only want the highlights to come out. Well, you know, that's, that's wonderful. And what they'll do is they'll do a spot meter on the highlights. Most people don't even need a spot meter, which they should do a lot more spot metering. And uh, this is really bad for uh, uh, for uh, mirrorless cameras that they will do uh, engage in and using WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get so they'll dial in the exposure that they want the image to look like it's like that's how I want this shot to look that's all well and fine but that's actually not well and fine it's bad because you've not only desaturated out the highlights you've completely lost everything in the shadows and what it will look like even if you uh, process the image for the highlights the shadows will look like mud, and they'll look like mud for a reason. When I say that you need to saturate your sensor, it means that more information is better. Always. I'm not talking about changing lighting ratios. More information is always better. I just repeated myself because it's so important. I don't know what it is about that that people don't understand. Saturate in your camera. Your camera, this is not the days of film anymore people would expose on their camera. And of course you could tweak it in the, in the dark room and I spent so many ages in the dark room it makes me sick to think about it. But that's what you did in film photography. You don't expose in your camera anymore. Sure you do. That's a bold statement. I don't mean it literally like you don't expose in your camera. You're not blowing the highlights. You're saturating the shot. You should be shooting raw. This is the reason why everybody should be shooting raw. If you like JPEGs, fine. Shoot raw plus JPEGs. Later on, you'll learn maybe how to edit JPEGs. This is the reason why shooting raw is so important. There's no downside to having more information in the digital raw data. There is zero downside and every advantage to having as much information. This is where you expose your shot in digital photography. Yeah, I don't know if you're hearing me correctly or not, but this is so important. Here on the computer is where actual exposure occurs in digital photography. Saturate in your camera, expose in your computer. Yeah. There is no way you can say that that is incorrect. And I'm not talking about blowing your highlights, and I'm not talking about ignoring lighting ratios, because the lighting ratios, of course, are 
entirely important to the composition of the shot that you want, but you have to saturate in your camera and expose in your computer. That's what digital photography is. More information, more better. That's an easier way of saying it, right? SNR is everything. Signal to noise ratio is everything. Even if you only want the highlights exposed, yeah. The more you saturate, the more information you'll have in your highlights and also the more information you'll have in your shadows. If you have no control over your lighting, like a club scene or outdoor shot where your flash obviously again at work, you know, from uh, 100 yards away or further, you're still saturating your, you're saturating your camera. This is why WYSIWYG is bad. Everybody loves WYSIWYG. And I know why they like it. You know, I like WYSIWYG. Oh, that's nice. I'm actually seeing kinda. No, you're just looking at a little EVF TV display inside your camera. That's not really what your camera is doing. And also, too, the JPEG that you're looking at is also, too, not the RAW file that you hopefully captured. Saturate in your camera, expose in your computer. You obviously always need to set your lighting ratios, but shoot the lowest ISO, saturate the sensor, set your lighting ratios and you will always 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 without any exceptions have the best raw image file raw file image to work with on your computer more information let's repeat it three times because it's so important more information more better more information more better more information more better It's kind of like diluting a drink, not that I drink alcohol. It's like, well, I only, you know, I only want, you know, I, that's all I want. No. No, if you want it to be that weak, your drink, and I'm just using an analogy, if you want it to be that weak, weak do that in the computer, but get as much as you can, because that's what people are doing. It's really kind of a perfect analogy. Like if someone wants to mix a drink, it's kind of a perfect alcohol analogy, even though I don't drink. It's like, well, there's one shot of bourbon and two shots of, uh, I don't know, some sort of, uh, you know, fruit juice or whatever the hell it is. If that's what you want, if that's the mixed drink that you want, do that in your computer. What you do in your camera yeah, is you pour as much of that bourbon in there as you can, and then you take it to your computer, and that's where you actually cook up the final recipe. Be it the TIFF file or the JPEG from the RAW. That really is a perfect analogy, and I just came up with that. It was spontaneous thought genesis on, like, the perfect analogy. Perfect. If you want to mix a drink that's got, like, fruit juice in it and a chunk of pineapple or whatever, you do that in your computer. But in your camera, try to pour as much of the bourbon or information in your glass as possible, and then turn it into the mixed drink that you want in your computer. More information, more better. Saturate in your camera and expose in your computer. There is zero downside to this, and there's not a single person on Earth that can contradict that statement. Not a single one. Not even one. You see, no one on YouTube has made a video like that. You can say, well, other people made videos about ETTR. They didn't explain it so succinctly with the, the other parameters and the fact that if you set high ASO and program aperture shutter priority, you are doing direct causation, excessively high ASO. You're doing direct causation of noise in your RAW file and your JPEG too, or both, depending on what you're shooting. And that's also too undeniable. <sighs> Thank you so much. I think I got too much sun today. I think I've been out in the sun too much. I feel like my brain has been fried. Thank you.